Hey, what's up? It's kid time for another video. Today, we will add to the jig rigging library. And sorry for you guys in the US, it's not available to you. Uh, could order from Japan, but uh, I don't know why they, they didn't import this. But it's a very good jig to have. And I know we were talking about, and I've shown you this. Okay, this is the Cutlass from Sea Falcon. And this is Major Craft's foray into the Cutlass uh, jigs. All right, so this is the Metal Dragon from Major Craft XD. This is uh, glow and silver, comes in different colors. But today, what we will do is rig a silver one right here. Okay, so. This is a very easy to use jig. I've used this a, a few times already and I've lost a couple, okay? Very easy to use. Um, it is an asymmetrical jig, as you can see there. So there's a uh, flat side and then there's the angled side. And although it's asymmetrical, it is actually a fast jig and it is a center balanced jig. As you can see there making it very easy to use so you drop this down okay it drops down straight and then you can work it slow to make it go horizontal and flutter okay so it has a very nice fluttering motion of course it slides and then flutters like that uh, amberjack candy Okay, uh, the slim profile of this jig makes it very easy to work and it is not hard on the body and I think this is one of the biggest things with this particular jig. It doesn't fatigue you. Very easy to use. Okay, um, takes very little to make it slide. The biggest downfall or the biggest, uh, what do you call this, the biggest issue with this jig is that it's thin. Okay. So although it has a ton of action because of the profile, which is thin, okay, the problem is when you drop it on the deck, it bends, okay? And when it bends, that's it. You have to find a way to straighten it out. Believe it or not, this is actually in the packet. It says that in the packet. So even Major Craft themselves are actually saying, when you use this, be very, very careful, alrighty? Uh, otherwise, a very good and easy to use jig. I'm up for like for jigs that are very easy to use. Okay, so there are some certain brands that have excellent jigs, but requires you a bit of skill to actually use. Now, this particular jig, you don't need to be an expert to actually make this work. It just works. It's that easy. Okay, so uh, yeah, for you guys in the States, you could order them online uh, from Japan. Okay, because the U.S. doesn't stock this. Everywhere else, rejoice. This is a very cheap alternative to really high-priced jigs. Although, on the downside, it just gets bent. Okay, so this particular jig here in Dubai sells for 40 dirhams, which is really, as far as jigs go, actually pretty good. Okay, uh, 200 grams for 40 dirhams. I am not too sure exactly how... how uh, how high up it goes but uh, for most of our usage the uh, 200 gram actually is a very very practical weight so let's go ahead and rig this with uh, VMC 7264 TI size 9.0 this will be a very okay so for the 200 gram Again, if we do our sizing, you can see that if we have it where we want it, which is there, okay, you can see that it sticks out a little bit like that, and that's exactly what we want. So that's the uh, the length we're shooting for right there, okay. When it's done, it'll be like that, okay, somewhere there. Um, I often use only one hook when I rig for fast jigs because one is actually enough now if you want to ha put more go ahead and do that but for me I've found that the simpler 
the uh, arrangement is, the better. And there's beauty and simplicity. Okay, so the very first thing we do is, of course, splice. And we are going with PFZ05 from owner, 140 pounds. That should be enough right there, which is roughly about the length of the jig. Okay, so when we fold it, we are going to insert and then we're going to have to tie a knot here. So with a bit of allowance, we should be in the ballpark of where we want. Uh, word of note, if you look and there's some fuzzies, all you have to do is just run a lighter and fuzzies will be gone. Okay, so I'm doing this for, for this... Uh, length here there's just a little bit of fuzz now they're all gone so we have a latch needle and it's very easy this uh, this particular braid is or cord is very easy to work with easily one of my favorites I know a lot of people are saying like oh we don't see you splice it so right now I'm showing you this in plain view sometimes it's just easier if you know I, 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 I do it out of view but there's been quite a few people saying that oh we don't see you splice it so here we go okay now put that there okay okay so that's about halfway in and then we get a so this is a uh, GP ring it's one of the big ones okay that's a pear shaped ring put this on there splice it so this is one of mine and we're taking a break from rigging Wa'el's jigs. There's only a few left. Okay, so we have that. Okay. Now I'm going to bring you in. So you see exactly what I'm doing here. And uh, what we will do is actually glue this up as well. So I'm going to show you exactly how I glue this up. Okay, so we have the splice. this on like so what we'll do is we'll tie a knot okay so now we measure okay and we want it there so when you're measuring always kind of envision the position with the split ring so it's right here alrighty that's it now what we do is ensure that this is tight so that and then we pull we take a pair of pliers like so we pull here we pull here to ensure that this bit here is good now knife okay you cut at an angle you cut at an angle like that don't worry if that moves okay so you cut at an angle You need a very sharp knife. Cutting at an angle ensures that when you tie that up, it is clean. Okay. So what happens is if you when you tie that up, because it tapers, you'll have a very clean transition. We've done this in the channel, we've done this a ton. Okay. We have done it a ton. All right, you can see it there. Now, 
you can start right at the back make sure that you have a couple of wraps in or you can start from the shank it's up to you in this uh, for this particular uh, style it's actually not critical okay but there's no excuse to doing things sloppy so there we go okay now I have a bobbin holder where I could adjust the tension on so it might be different for you however I encourage you to get a bobbin right as a uh, bobbin that has the same function if you're in the US and if right okay r-i-t-e bobbins and if you're elsewhere you can look for stonfo these bobbin holders are not cheap and if you are using an ordinary bobbin it's fine too okay now see that you can see how clean it is because of the transition that we created the ramp and you can see that as I am wrapping back here it's touching turns and it makes it really clean like so be careful of the tip you don't want to cut your braid so the the elements that we have here that's very important is the vise that can hold the hook and this is a 9-0 okay and then we're holding the vise and I am lashing it with quite a bit of force now you can see that it's actually moving there so I need to have my hand on this to keep it from moving so that the the energy gets transferred to the binds okay like so you can see that that thing is not going anywhere now the purpose of this of course is that when you're pulling on this okay if you have a fish or you have load on um, when you're pulling on this the tag the binds on the tag keep it keep this tag end under pressure resulting in this knot being tightened even more so it does not come loose okay so that's the whole rationale for this binding thing now for the binds the slimmer it is the better I know there's a lot of people that put uh, all sorts of uh, stuff here that's good you know if that's what you like fine now now that this is all cleaned up you have a choice of either putting flash or whatever you want on this and uh, it would be a very very clean base as you can see there so putting flash on or uh, putting sort of like a uh, a a jacket or a wing of sorts like uh, fish skin just to give it a bit more flash that's fine but for me having it like that okay having it clean like that in in itself is actually quite beautiful so I'm not gonna add okay I'm not gonna add anything else because guess what when you're fishing the main attraction is the jig it's not your hook and the more crap that you put on the hook the more it's gonna take the uh, the attraction off of your jig so why would you want to do that you know if you want to do that I mean I do that okay on occasion and uh, within reason some people give it uh, some people give uh, you know like uh, for some people that sort of thing give the gives them a uh, a, lot, a lot more reassurance and if you're one of those people hey 
no hate if it gives you confidence to keep you fishing more go ahead and do it and uh, if you look at my Instagram you'll also see that I was the first one to actually do something like that a long time ago before things went crazy so that alrighty so very clean so now after a while of doing all those fancy smanchy things I realized that the more frills you put on the more the attraction of the jig is actually taken away from it and uh, it has some effects that might or might not work so you know after a while I just said like uh, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd better not all right now glue up so we have a choice of super glue or something else um, path of least resistance of course is super glue um, still a lot of people disagree with super glue at this point in time you can either put super glue or you can put a sleeve of uh, uh, heat shrink and then call it a day now for me again just for the sake of expedience I always use super glue and this is actually a thick compound super glue not the uh, the runny kind so as you can see there it's, it's almost like a gel okay so for me it's actually easier to to uh, work on a uh, rotary vise for this particular thing let me zoom in so that you can see exactly how it looks like okay you can see there okay so you can see that it doesn't really move around now what I'll do is I'll hand hold this okay and then I am going to spread the uh, glue around because there's there's a lot so I'm just gonna spread this around like so now this will kind of harden much like a uh, epoxy because it is kind of high build for those guys this is AK fix 705 if you are uh, wondering okay so just spread that around okay and you can see that it's actually quite clean so that's that's basically it okay that is basically it now what I will do is uh, I'll put this on I'll put this in a place where there's no airflow so that it could naturally just dry up on its own and and that is that okay so this is a bit a bit too much okay uh, and it's sagging a bit so again if I was using a uh, rotary vise it's just a simple simple uh, rotation until it actually dries up but I am not using a rotary vise today on purpose because a lot of people are saying that well we don't have the same so how do we deal with that and this is how you deal with it so you put a thin coat and if you overdo it again a tissue is your best friend so here's one for example and even if it's kind of a viscous you could just touch it like so and it will absorb as much as it can the excess it's probably better if you do it with a, a single ply of the tissue and just run it across like that it will basically take off the excess just be very very careful because otherwise you're kind of gonna wreck the whole thing so again now that it's that what I will do is just put it on my vise 
I have the fans turned on right now so there's no circulation in the room. So I'm just going to leave it like so. Now the reason why I'm doing this upside down, okay, is so that the uh, the stuff from the top here would actually just go down and uh, actually go through the knot. But it shouldn't actually affect after the knot. Okay, so it's just going to pull around the knot. But it there's very little that would, would do that because we took the excess off. Alrighty, so once this is done, you will see that it's like... Uh, it has a coating of epoxy, but it's a very, very thin coating, much like uh, the others. Okay, so when you're looking, uh, like take for example, this one here, okay, you can see that it looks as if there's a very thin coat of epoxy on this one. Okay, and that's the effect. It's actually the same glue that we have there. So it's going to look really, really clean. It's going to protect the wraps. Okay, so it's done. As you can see there, it has dried up nicely. Very, very clean. Okay. Now, if you want to do something like this and you want to put a thicker braid on here, that's fine. Up to you. This is rated for 100, 140 pounds. And that's a lot already you know some people like 200 something and realistically the fish that I'm probably gonna catch with this wouldn't go over 50 kg if I'm lucky so 140 is actually a lot already okay now the only thing left to be done is for us to install a split ring on this and we call it done now again, if you look, we have to install it in such a way that it is going to be placed, the placement of the hook would be like that. And uh, you don't want it to be too long, otherwise it will tangle on your, on your jig. And you don't want that. So we take a uh, about a number six split ring and uh, this is a fast jig so a split ring that is non load bearing is okay but this 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 split ring is actually quite good uh, it's what I use for slow jigging okay now the hook install There we go. And it is done. So, as you can see, that looks really good. There we go. One Ember Jack candy. Done. Okay, so. If you're new to this channel, this channel talks about the hows and whys of fishing. We cover everything from big game, ultralight, everything in the middle, including fly fishing. Today, we have rigged the uh, Metal Dragon from Major Craft. If you learned from this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want your friends to learn, share this video. And uh, if you haven't yet and you want to learn more, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Alrighty, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Class dismissed.